Okay, so let's start with my presentation about solid state disks and hard disk drive performance testing, especially with our tool we have developed. It's called TKPerf. It's a piece of open source software. We have developed at Thomas Crenn and it just uses FIO and some other tools to measure performance and it's based on the SNEER standard for SSD performance testing. And before coming to real performance data, uh, first of all, a few numbers about the company I'm working for. Uh, yeah, we are based in Germany. We are selling server systems uh, all over Europe. And yeah, here are the numbers about number of employees, number of customers. And yesterday, my colleague pointed out to me a very important number is the number of uh, cups of coffee each year. That's about 13,000 last year. I hope we can break that number this year because we have more employees now. So next up, why are we doing the thing with performance testing? Because we get often many questions from customers uh, which hard drive they should buy or which SSD is the best. So we have many questions. Uh, which SSD should I buy? I need a cheap SSD. My SSD is getting slower. What's on? Enterprise SSD are so expensive. I need maximum IOPs, throughput, and of course. So we, have, we, have, we, are, we are being faced with different questions from customers. So we tried to figure out how we can test solid state disks uh, nicely. So here's the agenda. Why we develop it, I've already talked about. Next up is how we do it. And then the specific test scenarios. It's about IOPs, throughput, write saturation, and latency. Uh, we're using some handy tools for TKPerf. Uh, the three main pillars of TKPerf are the SNEER standard for SSD testing, the FIU flexible I.O. tester from developer Jens Expo and Python. We use Python to generate nice plots and generate the report. You can see here the different tests we are executing. TKPerf is focused on SSD testing mainly. We extended it for HDD testing afterwards, so we have only two tests for, for hard disks. Actually, so TKPerf implements the SNEER Solid State Storage Performance Test Specification, PTS, in version, version 1.0. So a few weeks ago, version 1.1 has, uh, has been published, but this has not been implemented by TKPerf so far, but we have plans to do that in the future. So it's, TKPerf is licensed under the GPL and has been developed by my colleague Georg Schönberger, so thanks for developing this to Georg and also for helping me with the presentation. Yeah, very important for TKPerf is of course uh, the flexible I.O. tester we are using. Uh, who of you has used a flexible I.O. tester before? Hands up. Okay, a few of you. It's, it's a very, very good and good tool for I.O. performance testing. And we are using Python to generate nice plots and reports. Uh, so act actually, the result of TKPerf is uh, a nice PDF report you can generate and also nice plots you have after running TKPerf. So this report also includes information we are gathering by tools such as HTPalm and we are doing a secure arrays before testing. Um, I, I will come back to the test workflow afterwards. We are only doing direct I.O. because we don't want uh, the page cache to be relevant for our testing. Uh, we are varying the number of jobs, the O death. And the good thing is TKPerf is very easy to use. Uh, if you have ever used FIO, it has quite a lot of options and is a bit complicated. 
it's always the question, which option should I use? And it's the same as, as with, with IOMeter, for example, I think. With IOMeter, you have many, many different options, tests, so it's hard to say what to test. And so with TKPerf, you only have this one command line in the first line of the slide. So everything is locked in the logging file. The results are locked to XML report. And out of that XML RST, a restructured text file is generated. And you can transform the RST file into PDF, HTML, or other formats. So what is also work in progress is that we want to be able to convert these XML files and generate combined diagrams. My colleague is working on that, and I've also I have a sample in the presentation later on. So I want to show you a report now, so you have an impression how it looks like. Okay, I have to stop presentation. Move over. Okay, here's the PDF report. That's, that's a sample report for Intel Enterprise SSD. Uh, you can see here the table of contents. It's, it has 12 pages. The, the whole information is gathered from the device automatically. So with HD Palm, for example, the serial number, the model, the firmware revision. We are trying to add more information here too. Here we have the IOP test, for example. We have plots here. I'll come back to the plots later on in detail. So we have plots and tables for the four test scenarios I've already mentioned on the agenda. OK. Okay, that was the slide we stopped. Next, the uh, ODEF. As you can see in this uh, diagram also matters. So we have to run parallel jobs to get most out of the SSD. So you see with only one job, uh, we only get about uh, 40,000 IOPs, but with more jobs, we come up to nearly 100,000. So if anybody from you likes to get started with TKPerf, it's very easy to do that. If you're running Ubuntu, you can just uh, activate our repository we are offering for Ubuntu LTS version and just say apt get install TKPerf. TKPerf itself is a Python script and we've created a bash script for interactive usage. So you can see here in the orange boxes uh, if you say TK perf dialogs, you can select the test name, the device, if it's SSD or HDD, and afterwards the test is started. This test can take quite some time, so maybe 12 to 24 hours. So yeah, and. As a result, after running TKPerf, you get an RST file and you can convert that just to the PDF file I've showed you before. So the technology behind the TKPerf is the Storage Networking Industry Association standard. It's a synthetic test scenario, so it's not a real live workload, not application-based test, it's just uh, synthetic, it tries to get as much out of the device as possible. So it wants to bring the devices to the edge. If you want to have an application-based test or you want to record the IOs, you have to, you can use block trace, for example, to trace the IO on a system and block replay to replay that IO, for example, on another system. There's a nice a PDF about block replay and block trace. So, a 
some new words and on the left is the workflow of the test. So first of all, we're doing a secure arrays for SSDs. So we want to get in an in a identical state for each test run. So for the IOPs, for the throughput, uh, the write saturation, and the latency test, we are doing all, this, all the four steps you can see here. So we are doing a secure arrays as a first part. Then we are doing a workload independent preconditioning. So we are writing the device uh, full two times with 128 kilobyte sequential writes because we don't want to test a fresh out of the box SSD because fresh out of the box SSD can show different performance characteristics. Some SSDs just uh, the performance drops down after writing for a longer time. So we are doing some preconditioning and the next thing we want to reach in the third step is we are running different workloads, random sequential mixed workloads and we want to get into a steady state. So the steady state is reached uh, when there, there is uh, no more than 20% variation from the average performance for five consecutive measurement runs. So we are trying to run the workloads as long as necessary and as soon as the performance is quite stable, we are saying, okay, now we have reached a steady state and now we want to collect the data to get the most occurrent uh, results. The steady state has a dependent variable. Uh, that's the point where the state is declared dependent. You can see this here on this graph. Uh, the blue dots are the, are the actual measurements in this rounds and the red line uh, shows the slope of the, of the measurements. So this performance results here are quite stable. So it shows that we have reached the steady state. So now we can start to collect the real measurement data. Here is the test overview. We are doing four tests for SSDs, the IOPs test, the throughput, write to duration and latency. In the second line, you can see the read-write mix. We are doing read-write mix for some tests. So 100% read, for example, 0% write. And we are using different block sizes for SSDs and hard disks. And the last line is about the dependent variable. So that is the point where we are reaching the steady state. We want to find out where the state is steady. So the next, the first test we're doing is the IOPs test. IOPs is the number people want to know for SSDs normally. Uh, yeah, you can see the different block sizes we are testing here. We're starting with 512 bytes and going up until one megabyte. This, this graph is interesting. You can see the different IOPs here. So we're getting most out with, uh, of course, the smallest block size here. We're getting about nearly 100,000 IOPs. Actually, this is not a SSD, but this is a PCI Express Accelerator card from Aztec. So you can see it just drops down with bigger block sizes, <coughs> the, IO, the IOPs. Okay, some excursus to PCI Express cards. Uh, the problem is HDPALM doesn't work for PCI Express cards, so you have to do something else. You have to patch TKPerf to run some commands uh, supplied by the manufacturer of the uh, PCI Express card. And yeah, you also have to use a description file for the S for the PCI Express card to be included in, in, in the rep report. So we can see here a comparison between a solid state disk and a hard disk drive. So the red line, uh, what do you think, how many IOPs uh, does the hard disk reach here about? How many IOPs do you, do you think does the red line here 
represent yeah so a few hundred IOPs so that's that's the normal case for hard drives they get about a few hundred IOPs and for example SSDs can get ten thousands of IOPs so if you need IOPs SSD is good of course and this is for a hard disk you can see the concrete numbers here for the IOPs yeah the maximum number here is about 330 and there's also a nice 3D diagram that's the SSD uh, for what I showed the PDF so you can see the read write mix here so 100% write is in the first part of the diagram and of course maximum can be reached uh, for the read test for the IOPs so it reaches about uh, 60,000 IOPs here and what can be seen for example for that enterprise SSD that this enterprise SSD also has a very good write performance so the write performance does not drop too much compared to the read performance so next test is the throughput test it's all about megabyte per second it's a sequential workload uh, we are testing here with one megabyte and smaller block sizes uh, the most interesting block size of course is the one megabyte here we have the diagram for the throughput uh, it's again for the same uh, Intel Enterprise SSD it reaches about uh, nearly 500 megabytes here and you can see the drop for the, the right performance for throughput <coughs> yeah, and that's for a hard disk drive uh, why do you think does the slope goes down here so any ideas It's, it's because hard drives uh, tend to be uh, slower in the inner tracks and in the outer tracks they are, they are faster so you can see that drop in performance because we are splitting the device in 124 8 parts and performance gets slower and slower in the in the inner tracks so that can be seen quite nicely in that diagram So next up is saturation. We are trying to write to the device as much as possible. Uh, we are writing four times the total device size to the device. And an interesting diagram is here. That's the combined diagram. We have an Intel 520 SSD. That's a consumer SSD and compared in, in blue the Intel Enterprise SSD uh, it's interesting to see that yeah the consumer SSD uh, the performance drops down quite soon after 25 rounds about but the Enterprise SSD, SSD stays stable and why does the blue line stop sooner because you we, we, we can do more IOPs on the other thing and we are writing the device four times so we just need a uh, fewer rounds to to finish the right saturation test here yeah next up is latency yeah one question yeah I can go back to the table we had before Oh, you mean you what what did you mean we are writing four times the device size <coughs> what, what is one round okay let's go back to saturation so one I'm not quite sure about that 
at least uh, it shows the number of rounds we need to finish the we need, we need to write uh, four times the device size so the last test is the latency uh, we want to find out how ma many milliseconds does it take to respond to our IOPS we have here the Intel 320 SSD it's also a consumer SSD and again an enterprise SSD from Intel and yeah we can see here the latency stays quite the same for the enterprise SSD and it increases a bit for the consumer SSD Yeah, so that's what we have implemented so far for TKPerf. Since it's open source, you are welcome to, to test it, to ex extend it. And we just tried to get reproducible results for it. And there are for sure some unknowns that we don't know if it's perfect or not. And we're also trying to implement the newer SNEER standard in the future. If you want to join the development, we have a Git repository for, for that, and we have also sample reports for SSDs for different ones from Intel and for STEC PCI Express cards. You can find that in our wiki. You can also have a look at the SNEER standard, the PTS enterprise standard. We have impl implemented that's the 1.0 standard, but there is the 1.1 standard available now. It is adding some, some more workload that is, uh, uh, that is not only artificial workload, but it should simulate more real workload too. So what pitfalls can you have? The test can take quite some time, so don't expect it to finish it uh, in a few hours. So you have to start it and on the next day it might finish some time. Yeah, the compression, some SSDs are doing compression and we, we don't want to measure the uh, compressible performance of a SSD. We want to measure incompressible performance. So we are using the option for FIO called refill buffers. So you see in the orange boxes, the IOPs are quite different and the throughput. So it, it does matter if you if you're measuring compressible or incompressible performance. So to sum up, uh, yeah, it's, it's not easy to find a good hardware platform for testing. We decided to make a dedicated server for testing all our drives. So we have the same server that is only for performance testing and we are installing the different disks from time to time. And we are not changing the setup for the, this server. So we get comparable results then. There's not a perfect drive available. There's always a trade-off between price and performance, of course. And third point, what's the future of TKPerf? We want to implement the new PTS 1.1 standard. We, 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 had, we have also questions about rate performance, but rate is quite a bit more complicated but you, because you have so many settings and Tests would take much, much longer, of course, also if you're doing extensible tests. SSD caching, uh, for example, on Linux is also a topic. So if you want to subscribe to our mailing list, uh, we are welcome you. So you can ask questions here and report your experience with TKPerf. Here are some references we used for the presentation. Okay, and I've prepared a short video I found because I found out that Edinburgh is very famous for, for its penguins in the zoo. So anybody has visited the zoo so far? No? Okay, maybe. If you have some time here, 
in Edinburgh to stay, you could visit the zoo because it has one of the largest uh, penguin colonies, I think, in the world or in Europe, maybe. So we, I hope that we have a sound now. Okay. Here's the video. have some time in Edinburgh, maybe you could visit the zoo. And also see other animals, but yeah, of course the penguins are the most interesting ones. So, thanks for your attention, and if you have any questions, just feel free to ask now or later on the mailing list. Are there any questions? So if we, if we run TK Perf on a uh, hardware array disk at the moment, yep. will it fail to run or will it uh, give uh, useless results? Uh, I think in the first step it will fail to run because HT Perm uh, would be unable to get some values from it, but you can use a description file for that. So. Theoretically, it will run on a RAID device because it also runs on the PCI Express cards and it, you, you only need a block device to run it on, so it can run, but it's not uh, specifically optimized for that. For example, it can't do the secure arrays, for example, for the RAID device, so it's not, it's not perfect to use it. But for example, you could use the HTT test because the HTT test only does the, does the uh, IOPS and throughput test. So, yeah. Yeah. So you, so the question was, uh, you have to, uh, you you have to choose between SSD or HDD testing, yeah. and what happens if uh, we select, uh, if we if we do the incorrect setting here? I, I, I did not try that out, but I, I I guess if you if you do HDD testing for SSDs, nothing happens because no secure erase is done, so that would work, of course. But the other way around to do the HDD. At the SSD test for HTT, I think the secure arrays will just fail because it's not implemented. So, so I guess the test will just break where, at the point where the secure arrays can't be done. Yeah? yeah if the number of writes uh, anymore an issue, so if I run PK perf on an SSD, is it the lifetime of the disk dimin diminished considerably or, or not? Maybe can you explain it a bit more detailed? I'm not sure what you are looking for. So at one point, SSDs had a certain limit on how many writes they can do before they start failing. Yeah. Has this been an issue anymore? So, uh, from the SSDs we have tested so far, that has not been an issue. Yeah, because you have, in theory, you have a you have a limitation of write cycles for SSD. So the, I think your question was if we have damaged SSD so far. Yeah. No, we did not do that.
Okay, so any more questions? Or can we finish the day? <laughs> okay, thanks for your attention. Have a nice evening.